You ready? Jaya Radha Manava Kunjabi Hari Radha Manava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavallabha Girivaran Hari Vallabha Girivaran Hari Kopi Jana Vallabha Girivaran Hari Kopi Jana Vallabha Girivaran Hari Yashoda Nandana Pajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Pajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Pajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Pajajana Ranjana Yamana Tira Vanacharya Tira Vanacharya Yamuna Tira Vanacharya Tira Vanacharya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Ajaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hare Jaya Rama Dhamma Punjabi Ali Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Padavijaka Charja Ashtar Tata Sri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Jai Iskam BBT Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Padavijaka Charja Ashtar Tata Sri Srimad his Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, Saraswati Thakur Kijai. Ananta Koti Vaishnavinda Kijai. Nama Charja, Srila Haridas Thakur Kijai. Srimad Bhagavatam, Jantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai. Samaveda Bhaktivinda Kijai. All glory to the Assembled Devotees. All glory to the Assembled Devotees. All glory to the Assembled Devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Varanga. Okay, let's see. Narayanam namaskritya Narang chayva narotamam Devim sarasvatim vyasam Tato jaya mudiriyet Ah, before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, unto Srila Vyasadev, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashtaprayashabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Yuttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki By regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil, and loving devotion to the Supreme Lord who is glorified in transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. All right, we're going to read a little bit, very little bit. About Purushottam Nastakur. 
okay. Bookmarks. Like I say, he had his recently had his appearance day, and this is a disappearance, I believe. Sri Purushottam Das Thakur constantly meditated on and served the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Kanu Thakur, his son, was such an exalted devotee that Lord Krishna always lived in his body. When Kanu was five, Janavamata took him to Vrindavan. That's uh, Nityananda's wife, one of his wives. The Goswamis joyously greeted him upon seeing his genuine devotion. In Goloka Vrindavan, Purushottam Das Thakur serves Lord Balaram as a cowherd boy. His samadhi is located in the 64 samadhis area. Shri Purushottam Das Thakur Ki Jai. And now... Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Today the 23rd, right? I think yes. Okay, thank you. On this 23rd day of February 2023 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We're in Candle 6, Prescribed Duties for Mankind. Chapter 5, Narada Muni, Cursed by Prajapati Daksha. Text number 29. Iti tan api rajendra Prajasarga Dio Munihi Upetya Naradaha Praha Bachaha Kutani Purvavat Ititanapi Rajendra Prajasarga Dio Munihi Upeta Nara Dak Praha Vacha Kutani Purvavat Ititan Api Rajendra Pajasar Gadio Munihi Upeta Nara Dak Praha Vacha Kutani Purvavat Ititana Pirajendra Pajasar Gadio Munihi Upetanada Dak Praha Vatak Kutani Purvavat Ititana Pirajendra Pajasar Gadio Munihi Upecha Nara Dak Praha Pachak Kutani Purvavat Ititana Pirajendra Pajasar Gadio Munihi Upecha Nara Dak Praha Pachak Kutani Purvavat Ititana Pirajendra Pajasar Gadio Munihi Upecha Nara Dak Praha Bata Kutani Purvavat Iti Thus Tan Them The sons of Pajapati Daksha Known as the Sabalashvas Api also, Rajendra, O King Parikit, Prajasargadiyaha, who were under the impression that begetting children was the most important duty. Munihi, the great sage, Upetya, approaching, Naradaha, Narada. 
praha said vachaha words kutani enigmatic purvavat as he had done previously translation o king parikit narada muni approached these sons of prajapati daksha who were engaged in tapasya to beget children and spoke enigmatic words to them just as he had spoken to their elder brothers no purport i'll read the next one myself takshayana sangsrinut sangsrinuta gadato nigamam mama andrichatan upadavim pratri nam bratra vatsalaha so this is now to speaking to the savalasvas O oh, sons of Daksha, please hear my words of instruction attentively. You are all very affectionate to your elder brothers, the Haryashvas. Therefore, you should follow their path. Purport. Narada Muni encouraged Prajapati Daksha's second group of sons by awakening their natural affinity for their brothers. He urged them to follow their older brothers if they were at all affectionate toward them. Family affection is very strong. and therefore narada muni followed this tactic of reminding them of their family relationship with the haryashvas generally the word nigama refers to the vedas but here nigama refers to the instructions contained in the vedas shrimad bhagavatam says nigabakal nigamakal patadogalitam palam the vedic instructions are like a tree of which shrimad bhagavatam is the ripened fruit Narada Muni is engaged in distributing this fruit and therefore he instructed Vyasadeva to write his this Mahapurana Shrimad Bhagavatam for the benefit of ignorant human society. Anatopashamam sakshat bhakti yoga man hoksha je lokasya janato bidvang chakre satvata sanhita. Quote, the material miseries of the living entity which are superfluous to him can be direct, directly mitigated by the linking process of devotional service but the mass of people do not know this and therefore the learned vyasadeva compiled this vedic literature shrimad bhagavatam which is in relation to the supreme truth this is bhagavatam 176 people are suffering because of ignorance and are following a wrong path for happiness this is called anartha These material activities will never make them happy and therefore Narada instructed Vyasadev to record the instructions of Shrimad Bhagavatam. Vyasadev actually followed Narada and did this. Shrimad Bhagavatam is the supreme instruction of the Vedas. Galitam palam, the ripened fruit of the Vedas is Shrimad Bhagavatam. Om gyana timarandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshu unmilitam mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Sri Lipapa, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So it's nice to review periodically how the Bhagavatam came to be, how it was written. This is a wonderful section of the Bhagavatam itself in the first canto. in which uh Vyasadev had described how he had written all the Vedas he had written the Vedas the Upanishads he had written the Mahabharat uh he had written the Vedanta Sutra which is the philosophical essence of the Vedas and yet after all of that he was still dissatisfied this is described in uh, probably chapter 5 of the first canto uh he felt some lack and so in that state Narada Muni came to him his spiritual master and he asked him why do i feel this way you know what could it be so narada muni began to explain uh in very important verses probably would often quote and uh, first he asked him do you think are you satisfied with your description of the mind and body as the objects of realization and what he's inferred by that uh is that so much of what uh, what avyasadeva had written had to do with um elevation to higher birth on this planet or even to the heavenly planets the karma kanda section of the vedas and um others had to do with liberation just liberation from from birth and death 
which is important, but it, it falls short of the actual goal for the soul, which is pure love for Krishna. We can never be satisfied just with liberation. This is, this is the, one of the messages of the verse that uh, Prabhupada would always quote about uh, where the demigods are praying to Krishna in the womb. They come, he's, he's in the womb of uh, Devaki and uh, in the uh, dungeon of Kamsa. And they come there unseen and they start offering these prayers. And the most famous one is, uh, Those who simply are looking for liberation, they're not pure devotees. Uh, oh, Lotus Eye Lord. And they, they prefer Brahman realization. Simply let me merge into the white light. No more birth, no more death like that. Let me be Brahma Buddha forever. And so they may pa practice severe austerities because to try to control the senses and the mind without bhakti uh, means that you have to, you have to you know, go to a very lonely place where there's absolutely no distractions and uh, sit and, and control, the, control the, the, the urges of the senses, vacho vega manasakkorda vega, we learned in the very first verse of the, of the uh, Upadesha Amrita, that these pushings are there from our conditioning of the, of the senses, the mind, intelligence, the, the, the belly and genitals, and so forth, the tongue. So how to control them without bhakti? This is the, without bhakti. <laughs> So severe austerities, kritchena, just by force of will to embrace it. In. So a very few can rise up to parampadam, which is Brahma Bhuta platform. They can get what they think is liberation. They think of it. This is the part of the 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 uh, essence of this verse. Ye ye ye. There are others besides your bhaktis. They're, they've glorified the devotees. These the, the demigod. Oh, oh Lord, aside, Lord, vimukta uh, maninas who think that they're liberated. They think that they're liberated when they go up to Brahman, but they're not really because the they're, they're not the soul can never be satisfied just with the nirvishesha. Nirvishesha means a, a devoid of any details. You don't have a form. The absolute has no form. There's no bhakti rasa. There's just that relief. I'm not going to take birth again. I'm not going to you know no threefold miseries. But that's not satisfying. That's negative, you see. You eventually get restless up there. And that's why they're patan They fall down again. And you know, probably they'll do some welfare work, open hospitals or something like that. Because they're not satisfied with their realization. Ultimately, it's not satisfying. So, uh, after this instruction, there's some very important instructions there. The Narada Muni says, uh, This is the famous verse about those words even though nicely composed, beautiful language, Shakespeare, or whatever it may be, Sanskrit, it doesn't matter the language. But it, but it, but it doesn't glorify Krishna. They're some other, whatever, whatever it may be. They're like a place of pilgrimage for crows. In other words, like a garbage heap. So he didn't tell them directly, but a lot of what he wrote didn't, didn't directly glorify Krishna. And, but on the other hand, it may be very crudely written, but it just deals with the name, fame, form, qualities, and pastimes, and service of Krishna and the devotees, then, the, then even the great sages will read that and relish it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, then, then there's, 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 other, there's other, two other verses Prabhupada always quote. Tyakvasa dharmam chadanam bhajanghare. If someone gives up his role in Varnashram Dharma, which we know is important to follow those duties properly, but he gives it up just to serve the lotus feet of Krishna, to join the Hare Krishnas. Taktvasva dharmam chadanam bhajan hare bhajan, to worship the lotus feet of Hari. Bhajan apakvo, but his, uh, his uh, efforts are immature. He doesn't follow the whole course. He bloops, in other words. Apakvo means not totally cooked. You know, you got the shwapakas, those who cook the dogs, and then of course they eat them after that. Swapachas. So, apakvo tapate tado yidi, what is there any benefit from him? What has he achieved? He's followed his dharma very nicely, you know, and, and, and maybe he went to the heavenly planets, but then he falls down again, he's back where he started. What did they achieve? Chine punye matya loka vishanti. Even if you do get to go to heaven, it's not a permanent situation, you come back, back where you started. 
What does he achieve? On the other hand, someone who uh, uh, gives up his, his dharma and, and tries to uh, practice Krishna consciousness but falls away, what has he lost? Because there's no loss or diminution. Any, anything you achieve on the material platform is ultimately lost. So it's all completely wasted time. Shrama eva hi A lot of effort for nothing. But any, any progress you make on, in, in Krishna consciousness is never lost. That's why this whole thing, just once chanting the holy name, you can get free of all your, your sins, you know? And it, it, you may once chant the holy name and then you go back to sinning, you know? And that's but the thing is, you just eradicated lifetimes of sin, you know? And, and then the next, next life, maybe you'll chant two names. In other words, there's no loss of diminution. So therefore, the idea is that, uh, old Vyasadeva, you should write a book that's wholly and solely about Lord Krishna, his devotees, the process of devotional service, and like that. We hadn't read, written that yet. So he instructed him, now you just meditate. You just meditate, you're so advanced on the pastimes of Krishna, and uh, the inspiration will come to you what to do. So I'm just going to read these verses. These are important verses. Seventh chapter, first candle, starting with text four. I'll just, the Sanskrit's very short. So this is describing Vyasadeva on the instructions of his guru, Narada Muni, to sit down and meditate on Krishna and all the inspiration will come. They're very important verses. And, and the, the, the genesis of the Bhagavatam is right here in this, these verses. Bhakti yoga ena manasi samyak pranahite amale Apashat purusham purnam mayam chattarapashim. Thus, Vyasadeva fixed his mind, perfectly engaging it by linking it in devotional service without any tinge of materialism. And thus he saw the absolute personality of Godhead along with his external energy, which was under full control. Now the idea is she can't stand in front of him. She's behind. You know, Krishna can't be affected by Maya. So this illusory energy was its kind of a shadow. But but by that shadow, the next verse, I'm just going to read the translations until we read the, maybe read the purport of the one that Prabhupada quotes in this purport. Yaya, by that Maya energy, Yaya sammohito jiva, atmanam chuganatmakam parobhimanote anartam tatkritam chavipadjite. Due to this external energy, the living entity, although transcendental, by nature transcendental to the three modes of material nature, thinks of himself as a material product and thus undergoes the reactions of material miseries. Uh, anar- they're called anartas. This is where the anartas come in, what you don't want, but they're forced upon you. And then the verse Prabhupada quoted, Anartopashamam sakshad, bhakti yoga man hokshaji, lokasyajana dodvidvangs chakra sattva da sanghitam. Those material miseries, the anarta, uh, the material, misery, material miseries of the living entity which are superfluous to him can be directly mitigated by the linking process of devotional service. But the mass of people do not know this, and therefore the learned Vyasadeva compiled this Vedic literature which is in relationship to the supreme truth. Simply by giving yasyam vai shuyamanayam krishne padamapurushe bhakti rutpadyate Pungsa, Shoka, Moha, Bayapaha. This describes exactly what we're doing here, listening to the Bhagavatam. Simply by giving all reception to this Vedic literature, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the feeling for loving devotional service to Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, sprouts up at once to extinguish the fire of lamentation, illusion, and fearfulness. Okay. So the great sage Vyasadeva, he compiled Srimad Bhagavatam and then he revised it, taught it to his own son Shukadeva who was already engaged in self-realization. And that's what we're hearing. Shukadeva Goswami speak the Srimad Bhagavatam. So I'm going to go back to that verse that was referred to in the, uh, the purport, which is this Anartopasamam Sakshad. And I want to read this, this purport, which is very nice. Hare Krishna. Welcome. So this is the one where it said the material miseries are superfluous to us, uh, but, and they can be directly mitigated by the process of devotional service. But people don't know this, and therefore he wrote the Bhagavatam to give them the knowledge. So this whole movement is based on this, this Srimad Bhagavatam, which Lord Chaitanya said this is the actual commentary, proper commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. Not Shurika Basha. So because he, the Bhagavatam was already existing and he was preaching Bhagavatam, he felt no need to write another one or have one of his disciples write. Eventually that was done by Baladev Vidyabhushan for other reasons. We want. So we have 
are Govinda Bhasha, which is a, a commentary on the uh, Vedanta Sutra based on Bhagavatam. So this, I'm just going to read this uh, purport, it's not too long. Srila Vyasadeva saw the all-perfect personality of Godhead. This statement suggests that the complete unit of the personality of Godhead includes his parts and parcels also. He, Vyasadeva, saw, therefore, his different energies, namely the internal energy, the marginal energy, and the external energy. He also saw his, di his different plenary portions and parts of the plenary portions, namely his different incarnations. And he specifically observed the unwanted miseries of the uh, conditioned souls who are bewildered by the external energy. This is the anartas. And at last, he saw the remedial measure for the conditioned souls, namely the process of devotional service. It is a great transcendental science and begins with the process of hearing and chanting the name, fame, glory, etc. of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Revival of the dormant affection of, or love of Godhead does not depend on the mechanical system of hearing and chanting, but it solely and wholly depends on the causeless mercy of the Lord. In other words, the hearing and chanting and your awakening, that's evoking the mercy of the Lord, and that's really what is the, is the uh, important factor. When the Lord is fully satisfied with the sincere efforts of the devotee, he may endow him with his loving transcendental service. But even with the prescribed forms of hearing and chanting, there is at once mitigation of the superfluous and unwanted miseries of the material existence. And this is one of the reasons why this movement has grown and is still growing. Because if one actually takes it up, long before you, you attain pure bhakti, prema, your material miseries will be relieved. Your anxieties, your troubles, and all of the worries, that, that's, that's, the, that's the first installment, you know? And that itself is a wonderful place to be and it indu in, in, induces you to continue the process and go on, you know? Such mitigation of material affection, now this is a, <laughs> I'll, I'll come back to this word. Such mitigation of material affection does not wait for development of transcendental knowledge. Rather, knowledge is dependent on devotional service for the ultimate realization of the supreme truth. So that's the end of the purport. Now just this word affection, you can watch for this. Of course, affection, we know what affection means. You have some affection for someone or something or like that. No. This word affection means the quality of being affected by which is one of the official meanings of the word, but it's very rare. And Prabhupada would use it, and you have to watch, because mit mitigation of material affection kind of makes sense if you think of the other meaning. That, okay, I don't have any affection for anything material anymore, so now I can have affection for Krishna. But that's not what this, in this context. It means you're not affected by the, by the threefold miseries and like that. That's what it means. So, back to our... Um, Sixth canto here. And, yeah, here we are. So, so one thing I, uh, that's very interesting here is to just contemplate a minute Narada Muni's skill in preaching. He, just what someone needs. This is, this is what this verse is about, the, the verse of today. He didn't tell him, you can, you'll attain pure love of Godhead and liberation of material energy. Just go follow your brothers. They weren't ready for that. But he knew, but he knew they were very affectionate to their elder brothers. You know, you know, like your elder brother is often, you, you know, you, you rely on him. There's a close bond there, of protection and respect. So he played off that, and, and uh, you should follow their path. They'd already gone and, and, you know, were performing their austerities. So, so think about it. Narada Muni always knows exactly what to say and how to preach to each individual. For, for Dhruva, he, he didn't tell him, forget about the kingdom, you know. Just try for love of God. Yuba wasn't ready for that. He wanted the kingdom. He was, you know, amazing. He was a little five-year-old boy, but he had that chatriya spirit, determination to go out alone into the forest. I mean, it's amazing. So he's going, going. And, and uh, after Narada tested him, first he said, you're too young. I'll tell you later. Just go back and grow up a little bit. Thank you very much, Osage. But if you can't help me, I'm going. You know, so he started at me. said, okay, okay. So now, listen, he gave him a process of of, of uh, 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 bhakti, you know, which was centered on very austere, you know, this is Satya Yuga. And so, uh, what did he teach him? He taught him, of course, this, you know, reducing his, his uh, eating, he was eating just the fruits that fell off the tree, then he stopped that, just eating the leaves, then after a while he stopped eating at all, he's just breathing, 
slowing down his breathing. That was how he was living. And he had, I use this word, entrained. He, the whole universal breathing was, showing, was slowing up after he got to this point, after six months or so. And the demigods couldn't breathe. And so they went to uh, Vishnu and said, please do something. He's meditating on you. Go down. And so he went down personally on Garuda. And, you know, he, he saw, Juba saw him. So, but while he was doing all that, all that austerity, he was chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. He was chanting the holy name. He was also doing a rudimentary deity worship, which is bona fide. You, usually they're by a river. You have to be by a river because for water. So you can take some mud, make the deity, you know, as best you can, off the thing, and then dissolve it into the river. That's bona fide, as mentioned, in, I think, in the Bhagavatam. So he was doing the deity worship, and he was doing his uh, meditation on Vishnu in the heart and chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, and his motive was to get that kingdom, get that kingdom. But by the time that Vishnu came down and gave him the darshan, Swam and Kritato Smivarangmanyache, he saw that that kingdom was, was like a piece of glass. He says, Stana Bilasi Tapasisti Toham, Twam Praptavan Devam and Indraguiham, Kacham Vichindvan Nabidibiratnam Swam and Kritato Smivaram Diyachi. So he says there that uh, I was situated in great austerity, desiring Abilashi, a kingdom greater than my great grandfather's Brahma. You know, it was almost like a childless thing. Well, what, what, what kind of kingdom is that? I mean, come on. You know, because he's only five years old, but he had that Kshatriya spirit. And, you know. So, Tapasi says, Tvam but now I've gotten you. He's speaking directly to Vishnu. Vishnu has come down on Garuda, and his meditation broke. You know, he couldn't see him in his heart. He opened his eyes, and there's his object of meditation outside, you know, which is the ultimate. So he offered us obeisances, he wanted to offer prayers, but he was only five years old, he hadn't studied Sanskrit enough, so he got the touch from the conch, and suddenly he could offer these beautiful Sanskrit prayers, just like Pallad was touched on the head by the Shringa there. So, uh, uh, now I've gotten you, Trambhaptavan Deva Manindra Guyam, who were hidden away even from the great Devas and the Munis. They don't get this, this personal vision of you. So now I understand. Kacham Bachindvan, I was searching and, and, and striving for a broken glass. In other words, Brahma's kingdom to me now is no more, more worth than, Brahma's, than, than broken glass. Brahma, who lives 311 trillion, 40 billion years. Kacham Bachindvan, Abhidivya, because I have got this divine jewel of your darshan, you know. And so, my dear Lord, I don't want anything else. Now, that's not in the Bhagavatam, that prayer. But uh, another prayer that this is in the Bhagavatam that's, that's recorded in the same pastime uh, is wonderful. Bhakti Mahur Pavahatam Tvaheme Prasango Bhuyadananda Mahatam Amalashayanam Yenanja Solbana Muru Vesanam Bhavabdi Neshe Bhavad Gunakatam Tapanam Hatta. A very beautiful verse. So he's, so he's praying now. This is what I'm, he's praying for. He's not praying for the kingdom. He's praying for the association of your devotees in whose hearts your, your pure devotion is flowing just like a, a, a river of nectar. Muhur pavahatam, pavahatam means very powerful flow. Tvahime prasanga. This word prasanga is important because we know about sadhu sanga, about the association of devotees, right? Lord Chaitanya he, he verified Saru Sangha Saru Sangha Sarva Shastri Koi Lava Mata Saru Sangha Sarva Siddhi Hoi that, that it said in the Shastras that even a moment's uh, association with the Sadhu can give you all perfection in life now the idea is that the, the seed of bhakti can be planted by that association and then if you water it properly you'll get all perfection it's not just you know the usual thing is that not immediately you get uh, bhakti but be that as it may, that sadhu sangha. But this is not only sangha, but prasanga. Pra is always a, a, a um, amplifier word, and so this means not just some superficial association, which is also valuable, but really meaningful association, intense association, which basically means submissive, ardent he hearing from the sadhu. That's that's the most important kind of association. So. 
uh, that's, the, that's the association he wants with those devotees in whose hearts the flow of bhakti, bhakti is like a big river. Bhakti muhu pavahatam twahime prasango buyad ananda mahatam amalashayanam. Their, their, uh, their, their hearts are completely pure amalashayanam. Because by their association, neshe bhavad guna katamata, that's the last line, ye, by yena, oh, yena anjasolbanam, I will easily cross across this. Our ocean of birth and death, and I'll never forget this phrase, which is full of blazing, fire-like dangers. Ulbanam, visanam bhavabdin. Neshe bhavat gunakatamata panamata, because I'm becoming mad, intoxicated with hearing about your qualities, your name, your form and qualities. Gunakatamata panamata, drinking that. So this is Dhruva now, saying this. After all of his determination to get the kingdom, now he's, he's, he's describing how I'm going to easily cross over this ocean of birth and death just by hearing your, your, your nectarian, the descriptions of your nectarian. Uh, uh, Nama guna rupa lila. He's, he's saying, Nama rupa guna lila. So that's uh, Dhruva. So that was Narada Muni. Then when he got to the, the, the uh, here, here now, what is he doing? He's appealing to this uh, Shabalasra's affection for their brothers. And that's their original impetus for going to get their association or following their footsteps. And it worked, right? When he, uh, w- when he saw the hunter, he didn't tell him, stop it, this is a horrible sin you're committing, these, these poor animals half killing them, you know? He didn't say like that. He said, look, if, if, uh, if, all right, I understand this is what your father taught you, this is what the, the, the hunter said, but at least kill them completely. You know, don't, uh, don't half kill him because you're causing so much agony. You, and then he showed him, <laughs> he showed him by his mystic power, those animals that he, that he had killed were just waiting to torment him, you know, which we hear about in the third canto on the way to hellish planets. All the creatures that you've hurt, they, they're there, you know, biting you and tormenting you as you go down. So that, was, that really um, got the attention of the hunter. You know, he got to the, he said, oh, you know, well, uh, how can I be relieved? Well, you have to take up the process of devotion, and you'll prove you're serious about it by breaking your bow. In other words, he's going to give up his reliance on what he had been relying on for his maintenance and trust Narada Muni. That was an act of, of, sa- of sacrifice and surrender. And he did. And uh, Odi asked, well how, he asked, well, how will I eat? He said, I will provide your food, Seth. Don't worry. You know? So he broke his bow, surrendered to Narada Muni. And then he and his wife, they retired, gave everything away, and they were just chanting. And, and uh, people were giving, you know, oh, hunter, the hunt, that, that, that crazy hunter has become a devotee. They came seeing him, and they saw he was very pure, and they would give sacks, just like we have in the corner here. You know, you go in there, well, there's so much food stuff. You know, people are obviously donating a lot of stuff. So they had no, no need for... Um, for uh, any other food, they had too much. And when Narada g- came again with Parvat Muni, there was this wonderful scene where the hunter saw Narada at a distance, and he started waving his chatter in ecstasy, you know, and he was offering his basins, but he was like shushing away the, 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 the ants. He wouldn't even hurt an ant at this point. He had been so transformed. And uh, then he complained, why are you sending so much? He said, you would send, you know, you're sending too much food. So he, he preaches exactly according to time and place and circumstance. And finally, one more example, Vyasadeva himself. You know, Vyasadeva was the writer. You know, he had written all of these. He, he was empowered, in fact, incarnation of Krishna, expansion, Shaktivation, whatever. And so uh, he immediately uh, got on his case, if you will, and chastise him for writing th- things that, that were the, uh, everything but what people really need in this age, which is a book just about b- bhakti, within Bhagavatam. And so that's why, you know, this is a really strong verse. The first one was not yet about the, the, the pilgrimage of crows. I mean, basically he said, it, it's, you know, it's kind of a little bit over the top, because the Mahabharata has the Bhagavad Gita in it like that. So it's not in that. But, but this is what he needed to hear. You've written all these books, but they're no more good than a pile of garbage. You know? Because they're, they're not wholly and solely about bhakti. There's something in there. I mean, Bhagavad Gita is in the Mahabharata, it's an essential word. But the strong word, you know, got his attention. And then the next verse, Prabhupada was so, is so important that Prabhupada took that verse and he put it in his preface. A preface of the Bhagavatam, you read it at the very end of the preface. 
This, this verse inspired Prabhupada. Where would we be if Prabhupada didn't, hadn't written the Bhagavatam? We wouldn't be sitting here. It's him, it was writing that Bhagavatam, that first canto, and finally getting it printed at great effort, that really, now I have the ammunition. Now I can really go to war with Maya anywhere, even in New York City. You know, he wouldn't have left if he didn't have that. So, why was it so important? Because it says, Tad Bhag Basargo, Janataga Viplavo, Yasmin Bhati Shlogam Abadna Bhatyapi, Na Bhatyapi. God, I can't believe it. Tad Bhag Basargo, Janataga Yasmin Bhati Shlogam Bhatyapi, Na Mani Nanta Seshon Kitani Akshin Bhanti Gaya into Ganti Sarva. Okay, at least I remember it. His brain is going. So he says, Tad Bhag Basargo. Bhag Basargo simply means a literary work. Bhag is words, Visarga is creation, a creation of words. Janataga Viplavo, uh, which is meant to bring about this immortal phrase, a revolution in the misguided lives of this, of this misdirected civilization. You know, though, that's, that's the purpose of it. Janataga Viplavo. Viplavo means to uh, capsize the boat. In other words, it's, it's a metaphor for, you know, really uh, uh, changing people's lives completely. Yasmin Pati, but even, even if every shloka is miscomposed, in other words, it's not the, it's not the literary quality that's attractive to the sadhus. To the, 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 it, no. But but it contains glorification of the name, form, quality, and passives of the Lord. Nam of the uh, unlimited Lord. Gayanti, Gunanti Sarava. The the sadhus, the wise uh, devotees, they hear and chant and, and repeat it, even though this, this, the 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 uh, words are not so nicely composed, as opposed to the uh, beautifully composed. Every uh, you know Shakespeare or something that doesn't glorify Krishna. It's like a garbage heap. So the the swan like devotees, they drink that nectar. And the, the crows, they go to the garbage heap. And so that, that, so that was, this like really got Vyasadeva's attention. And then he went on to encourage him, and then he instructed him to do what we just read about. So you go and you meditate on Krishna. You're fully qualified, and all the revelation will be there. And he saw Maya behind him, you know, as his shadow. And he, knew, and he saw that all the people are suffering from these anartas because they don't know the science of bhakti. Although they're pure spirit souls, they're identifying with the bodies and minds, and therefore they're suffering life after life. So to help them, this is at the great sages, they're always trying to relieve people's misery, he compiled this Bhagavatam. And then the last verse we read in the series, Yes, I am, Shuyaman, I am, Bhaktim Param Purushe, Krishna Parama Purusha Bhakti Uputateya Shoka Moha Bayabaha. That gently by lending oral, by, by, by shushu show, by uh, what is it, uh, submissive oral reception or ardent hearing of the Bhagavatam, Bhakti grow, uh, awakens in the heart and Shoka Moha Baya Abaha. All your lamentation, your illusion, uh, and fear. Is, is destroyed, is taken away. In other words, this is the real remedy for all miseries, and on the positive side, it, it expands the ocean of bliss in your heart. So the, the, the whole movement and, of bhakti and uh, the science of bhakti is, is, uh, de, is defined by the, the Bhagavat, the truths in the Bhagavat. And Srila Prabhupada, at great effort, he gave us that, and I had you know, a little role in completing it, which was the greatest boon in my life. Be able to work on the tenth, eleventh, and twelfth candles of this work. So, any questions, comments on these points? Narada Muni, Bhakti Shakti. He's he's empowered uh, Shakti Vesh, and he has the Bhakti Shakti wherever he goes. He preaches just in according to time, place, and circumstance, and he can awaken Bhakti in everyone and anyone. He's got so many disciples. Yes, Cletus. Yes. Uh you said that Prabhupada was uh, ecstatic or happy for writing the Shrami Bhagavatam. But the question is, why was it important for Prabhupada to rewrite the Bhagavatam? No, why was it considered ammo when the Bhagavatam was already written? Because it, was, it wasn't in the English language. It was hidden from us. That was what he, what he gave. Not only in English, the translation, but all the commentary. 
that, that is based all on existing commentary. You should know that Prabhupada's purports, he's always referring to commentators. And there are many for Bhagavatam. I, I'm, I know because working on the Bhagavatam, there's like, you know, Madhvacharya is there, and Jiva Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, it's, and, and Dave Mita Swami has done a wonderful service by uh, taking the, uh, the digital uh, copy of Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavatam from database or something, and having uh, the Vishnu Chakrabarti's commentary translated. I think Banu Swami did that for the whole book. But, but uh, Dave Mita Swami added Jiva Goswamis and Sanatana Goswamis for the 10th canto. And that's now available to everyone. But Prabhupada was integrating those, you know, appropriately into his purports. So the, the point is, he made it accessible to, to the whole world. Through the English language, then it was translated into so many other languages, and it's still being translated. So that was, that was you know, one of Prabhupada's most important gifts is his books. He would, he would agree with that. And of them all, the Bhagavatam was the, the crown jewel, you know. So that was the whole idea, making it accessible to us, benighted souls, you know, we just speak English, and uh, so we could understand and he took such great effort. I mean, I, I have a Bhagavatam at home because on my work I needed some other reference. And many devotees don't know this, but there is a, a, a translation of Bhagavatam printed in English by, uh, um, what was that? Um, Gita Press. Hanuman Prasad Poda, who really helped Prabhupada with the donation to help these, the, the first canon be printed. There's a beautiful... Uh, uh, photographs, a series of photographs of them meeting, and they're they're joking together and having a wonderful time. Prabhupada was very thankful to him, but he had—I don't think he translated, but he had a whole press there, and he had one of his people translate it English into uh, English Bhagavatam. But it's just the Sanskrit that we can't, none of us can read practically. I can't read it either. I can a little bit the Devanagari and the translation. There's no commentary. Two volumes. Prabhupada's is 18 volumes, because when you add the transliteration, meaning the thing, how we can pronounce it, that, you know, and uh, the synonyms, very important, so we could understand how the Sanskrit came into the English, and the purports, it expands it greatly, and the expense and effort is, is exponentially greater. Prabhupada took that trouble to do that in all of his uh, Shastra books, even Isha Upanishad, the Chaitanya Charitam, of course, Bhagavad Gita, and the, the Srimad Bhagavatam. And, and uh, he also started doing that with the Narada Bhakti Sutra, which is a very nice book. It's a short book, um, talking about Narada, and uh, that gives the essence of the principles of Bhakti. In the sutra form, it, it takes maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes to read all the sutras, but there's some nice commentary. He started it, got to about 12 uh, sutras, and then Gopi Purana Dana Prabhu and Satsup Maharaj finished it, added the commentary and tra translation. A very, very nice book. You had a question yeah. or a comment? But wait, wait, we have a mic for you because we have an audience online. Thank you. Is that okay, please? We answered your question, more or less. Teacher, I had one question. Uh, with the knowledge that uh, you said that there are some reference books, I want to know if there is an online um, page where I can, or where uh, people of interest in language can see where actually um, the Indian language did form into English. Is there yeah, a yeah. web page that you go to? Uh, you, when you're speaking, I, and I'm listening to you. It, it, it seems like you've actually laid your hands on these books and was able to sit time and, and page to page and, and actually... Uh, I have, I, yeah, I, I, have my, I have four bookshelves in my, my apartment and they're all full. Okay. And, and, one, and the, the, the place of honor is right where Rabbi working is a whole set of Srimad Bhagavatams there. Okay. But you're right, there is, a, is a, a website you can go to and see the, the Bhagavatam. I think uh, they even have the Devanagari, database IO. And uh, I don't know if you... Later after, could you write the, the, the web page yes, yes. Uh, uh, address? For uh, sure. So I like that, just if you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I've, I, I've always been interested in linguist-isms, and uh, they say um, that uh, the, the, real, the real book um, is kept at the Library of Congress for where uh, it's not really access to our public at all. Um, yeah, uh, the, the it, library kind of is meant yeah, to be encyclopedic. Yeah, yeah, but it's kind of it's kind of been you know with the advent <laughs> of the uh, internet, 
and yes. kind of the unlimited uh, capacity to have a, uh, all all of Shri Prabhupada's <laughs> books are actually available online. Because I think that I think that's really is what 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 good keen people should know is how how language has transformed over over the, the ages, and and as well, wisely put, yeah. is that that. It's fascinating. It the, the, the Sanskrit language, yes. you, we can see, is, is the root of all languages. There are so many Correct. English words, like the word name. We, yeah. are, we chant Hari Nam, Nama, a name. They, the, 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 Nama is the name of God. Yeah, three Tum- consonants, are, the consonants just, just three letters. It started the whole, like you said, the whole, the whole yeah, alphabet and the, everything. Yeah, it we all began with the word om, and, and the, only, the syllable om, so yeah. it began with sound. Uh, okay, yeah, so yeah, we'll, I'll give you that thank afterward. You. Okay, sure. Uh, anyone else online? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I, I appreciated Dr. Peterson's question about why Srila Prabhupada would write a commentary and why indeed are there so many commentaries, Baladev Vijabhushans and Sridhar Swamis. Um, I'm reminded of the verse in the Bhagavad Gita 10.9, Matchita Madgatha Prana, Bodhayanta Parasparam, Katayantas Chamam Nityam, Tushan Picha Ramanticha. The devotees enjoy enlightening one another and conversing about me, Krishna says. So they'll, there never will stop being conversations on the Bhagavatam because it's, it's the very activity that the devotees enjoy. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask a quick question. You begin your class with Narayanam Namaskarita Naram Chaiva Narottama. Today is also the appearance day of, of Purushottam Das Thakur and, and, and Narottam and Purushottam are very similar words. But this has always been a mystery to me, and I've always been shy about asking because the other devotees seem to be not very nonplussed by this, the idea of a supermost human being. So can you unpack that? What, what does that mean? So Nar- Narayan is, is God himself, so how does that Oh, Narayan, yeah. Being? Yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I, I've always been a little puzzled about Narayan Narayan. Is it two or one? Because... There's there's Nara and then there's Narayan. Nara is the human being, and Narayan is the supreme personality of Godhead. And uh, it's said that Arjuna and Krishna. I mean, we just read that. Uh, oh, I just read that in the Krishna book, where near the end of the of the whole book, Krishna goes with Arjuna to see Mahavishnu, who stole the Brahmin sons just so that he could see Krishna. And and uh, there, the Mahavishnu says, "Oh, you're you, you two are Nara, Nara and Narayan." There's Krishna and there's the uh, Arjuna as the Nara, but uh, and somehow the uh, Nara and Orion uh, is is showing us uh, the need for austerities. He's practicing all these austerities in the Himalayas and things like that. So so it's uh, it is a little it is a little puzzling to me about you know where this Nara and Orion falls and and why is why is he in that critical verse at the beginning. Uh, what is it? Narayan, Narayan Namaskritya, Narang, Narang, uh, Narayan Namaskritya, Narang Chaiva Narotamam, and yeah, and Nara as uh, the supreme uh, human being. Is that that's the one that's puzzling? Narotamam? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's, it's like. Okay, assuming Arjun is 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 the Nara and the Nara, Nara and Orion, the supreme human being is one who has uh, a pure devotee of Krishna. I don't think it's just one. It, it definitely de- designates one person. When when you find someone who's a, who's a pure devotee of Krishna, that's the supreme state that any human being can be in. And ultimately, we're not human beings. Human beings means the body. When we go back to God, and it's not that the human beings; it's that we're, we we are imitations of all the forms that are there in the material, the spiritual world. This I, this a common fallacy, as I'm sure you you're aware of. This anthropogenic uh, that 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 with the, uh, the some somewhere way back in history, people needed uh, a a, a god. And so they imagine God to be like them. But it's just the opposite. We are imitation Krishna forms. The original form is, is the human-like form with the two hands. Why? Because it's most suitable for all of these intimate relationships. If you have four hands, or many, many more hands, how can you have an intimate, friendly relationship with that person? You know, it's more like awe and reverence. It's got to be awe and reverence. So Krishna is, uh, the, uh, the God is originally with these, these two hands, 
and two feet, and uh, but everything perfect. And so that that uh, uh, supreme human being is one who has achieved his his uh, sarup, as it were, and is, uh, understands that even in the, in in the conditioned state or in the conditioned state, but in the material having a material body, and that uh, so that's the, that's the supreme human form as, as far as I can understand. But if you want, I can do some research on Narayan Orion, and because I really haven't looked into the all the details of. It's that phrase, supermost human being, but it, it does point to the interface of English and Sanskrit. And Prabhupada said, ultimately, the sincere student will go to the Sanskrit. So uh -huh. that other Prabhu's uh, okay. interest in Sanskrit is a, is a sublime path as well. But yeah. thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, Cletus. Krishna. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Donna Boy, go ahead. And then, actually, we have to start with this quarter. Go ahead. I just have one question. I just wanted to know if you are always and Prabhu, you um, have described uh, so many things in Sanskrit and Pudarnath, uh, who was a friend of Prabhupada, and I really like that. Uh, I used to read uh, when I was young uh, Pudarnath uh, Gita, Gorakhpur Press, and uh -huh. so I just I appreciate all this. Uh, references and all the detail in Sanskrit. Um, my question is, um, you mentioned uh, just the uh, last word, you said Srunavanti, Gayanti, and what was the third one? Grunanti. Grunanti. Yeah, I, I think that means to accept. To you know, Shunvanti, Gayanti, Grunanti, Sarva. Um, I, I don't have the verse in front of me, but uh, it, it, it means to hear and chant with complete uh, absorption. That's again going back to the Ashushu show, where, where you're just absorbing every sound and everything, and there's no distraction. It's uh, ardent, submissive hearing. So that's, the, the, in other words, they don't just superficially hear and chant, but they're hanging on every word, even if imperfectly composed. That's the, what I get from that. Okay? Very nice. Thank you. And it's in 11th canto. This slok is the 11th canto. Uh, no, it's actually in the, in the first canto, and also in the 12th canto it's repeated. I see. Yeah. It, well, I'll, it, write me an email and I'll ex explain. I will. Okay. Thank you Hare so Krishna. much, Prabhu. Yeah. Hare Krishna. So, we're going to end with the th 30 seconds more of a, a very nice verse, which is a prayer to Krishna. And it, all, every word begins with M. Motadesh Madhudi Maya Madhava Motadi Matalika Mugdha. Mama Mandana Mohana Madama Dayamanaso Maha Maha Moham. O Master of Mathura, lovely Lord of Goddess Sri, who plays such maddening melodies upon your murali. O Cupid's charmer, please redeem a life till now misspent by joyfully destroying my extreme bewilderment. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Rupa Goswami. I can ask you maybe after class, if you is it necessary? Is it urgent? Okay. Why, by the way, I wasn't scheduled originally to give this class, so I only had five minutes to prepare. That's why I was a little ragged. One more thing, teacher. Um, I was here about three weeks ago, and uh, there was actually a book of a library. It was showed uh, another kind of being, um, and uh, I was wondering if uh, you, that book was available today. Uh, one of your devotees had brought it down at class. And uh, the speaker for the day, uh, upon upon the knowledge of of, of, of receiving that photo, uh, uh, said, "I am." And I would like to know if I could uh, continue to look through that book um, on my always eternal quest to see. Yeah, I um, and all the beans. I'm sorry, I'm completely lost. Maybe I wasn't here that day. Uh, but uh, we'll try to. You, you yeah. sit right there in that chair all the time in the back. Have it. Put your hood on. Okay. I adore your classes. I like to be here. I've always been a, a real, real good guy. And I thank you for your, for your tenderness. Have okay, a good day. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vedabase.io. Yeah. Thank you, Maitreya. How far did I get?